Hello and welcome to this week's music show, kicking off in great style with Nilofa Yanya. You just heard her track, Crash. She joins us from London now to tell us more about that latest record. Nilofa, hello. Hi there. Now, this album, Painless, is released on March 4th. That's your second album. And often in the music industry, they talk about a difficult second album because you did have an amazing debut with Miss Universe in 2019. And I wonder if you were intimidated to return to the studio or was it Painless, as the title suggests? It was a bit of both. I think I, I wasn't feeling too creative for a while. Um, but then when it all... Um when I started writing and working on it, it all kind of fell into place. So it was a bit painless, but yeah. <laughs> a lot of it was done in lockdown, I believe. Now we'll get a taste of the album with this single. This is Stabilize. Now that video evokes a real sense of urban life in London. We see you in your own neighbourhood. It did make me think of the pandemic, the lockdowns, all of us nipping out to get a bit of solo exercise. How did that time affect you artistically? Did you enjoy the lack of distractions? Was it inspiring? Uh, I can't say it was inspiring, no. <laughs> um, it, was, it was, I think it was a weird time for everyone. So um, at first I thought, oh, I'll be able to do loads of writing, but... Um, I think because it's pandemic, you're thinking of other things, you're not really able to concentrate and feel creative. Because of course, that means that you couldn't collaborate and I believe that your sister, Molly Daniels, directed that video, you've been working together for a while now. Are you a natural collaborator, mm -hmm. bouncing ideas off other people, that feeds into your process? Um, I say a bit of both, I do like to work by myself, um, I like to come up with um, a lot of the ideas by myself and then I think collaboration happens for me when I've already got that relationship in place with someone and I'm naturally thinking of them. And I should imagine that missing or out on live performances, seeing your fans, that changed things? Um, yeah, it changed things. Um, at first I kind of liked not having to do um, shows all the time because I was kind of a bit exhausted from the previous year but um, yeah, I think now I'm really feeling it, like going back into touring, I'm feeling quite like apprehensive and anxious a bit. I'm like, oh, like, I thought two years have passed, but I haven't been out there, you know, touring, playing shows, so I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> well, that jolt of adrenaline should, should work. Now, another singing sensation uh, who, like you, worked with her sister was Ronnie Spector, the celebrated frontwoman of the Renettes. Ronnie's recent death, age 78, prompted an outpouring of tributes. She was hailed as a trailblazer for girl groups, and she was also, sadly, an example of just how badly the industry treated women, uh, denied her royalties, and subjected to sexism. Looking at things in 2022, Nilfa, what do you think are the major challenges for women in the industry today? I think there's probably the similar challenges as there's always been. Um... And I think one way of combating that is like making sure you work with as many other female women, female pre representing um, people. And is that something you're managing to navigate? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, it's, it's a process, like you just learn along the way. Mm. 
Now, speaking of girl groups, I believe you were offered the chance to be in one by the people behind One Direction. And you get asked a lot about this in interviews. I know people are often quite surprised that you turned them down, uh, which other people might have been nervous to do. But you went down an independent path. You've said you have no regrets. So what I wondered was, what was it that gave you such a strong uh, gut feeling that that was the right path for you? Um... I mean, like, I just uh, really enjoy making music and writing and doing all those things. So I don't really, I wouldn't have enjoyed being in a girl group and I wouldn't have enjoyed maybe doing it out of job. So <laughs> I didn't really leave myself much choices. And so instinct was right there. <laughs> now, beyond your yeah. own musical career, you've also spoken out about the importance of arts education more globally, including the visual arts. And you helped set up an initiative called Artists in Transit that organises workshops for refugees, initially in Greece and in London too now. Can you tell us a bit about the idea behind this project, what it brings to people? Um, yeah, so my sister Molly, um, she came up with the idea around 2016. Um, because she works for she worked for a charity in London that did a similar thing, um, and she wanted to try it elsewhere basically. Um, so at the time there was really well there still is a crisis, but there was the refugee crisis in Greece had come to like a massive um, point, and lots of people were talking about it. So we decided to go there first, and we just started trialing um, art workshops and ideas and. It's really just like very like grassroots um, organization. Um, the idea is just to show solidarity and connect with um, groups of people really. Now moving to a little music news now, another young woman putting London on the map music wise is FKA Twigs, who's just released the hotly awaited album Capri Songs. The record features collaborations from Georgia Smith, Warren Ellis and The Weeknd, and it was produced by Spanish musician El Guincho. Compared to previous albums, there's more hip-hop, R&B and dancehall influence here with some personal takes on relationships, self-esteem and urban life. Let's take a listen to a track from that album. This is Ride the Dragon. Nilofer, FKA Twigs is one of those artists that critics have tried to categorise and often failed because she's got a wide range of influences. But she is perhaps reflective of the melting pot that is London. How do you think the city's left its mark on you and the art you make? Um, yeah, I'd say the two things are quite interchangeable. Like, I can't really... I've never really lived anywhere else, um, so... It's probably a lot more connected than I than I realise, um, and I think if I was if I was to move, if I was to live somewhere else, it would either come with me or it would be very obvious which parts um, you'd leave behind in your music. And when you record, sometimes you take a break from London. What does that bring? Um, I think like clarity and space and um, the ability to think outside what you might otherwise normally be thinking. <laughs> make up her creative decisions. A change of scenery, a change of mood indeed. Well, next to another new release, this time from Norwegian pop star Aurora. The Gods We Can Touch is her third studio album, and she said she's not been shy of taking an opinionated political stance with this record, which deals with everything from ancient Greek myths to the challenges faced by the LGBTQ plus community today. Let's take a listen to one of the songs on that album. This is Giving In To The Love.
And we'll wrap up the show with new music from veteran singer-songwriter Elvis Costello, who's back with an album called The Boy Named If, with more of a rock edge this time. The record was made during lockdown, with his band The Imposters chiming in remotely. We'll leave you with a taste with the song Magnificent Hurt. But before we go, I want to thank my guest, Nilofa Yanya. Thanks for being with us, Nilofa. And do make sure to check out her album Painless. That drops on March 4th. Otherwise, do check out our website for more music news and we're on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this.